So curling has been a sport for you know more than a century, but actually the mystery, the physical mystery of how the rocks actually curl, that's been an open question that has interested scientists for more than a hundred years. Hi, I'm the physics fella, and today we're gonna learn how a curling rock curls. So the way curling works essentially is that they slide the uh, rocks along the ice and then the key thing is that they put spin on the rock and that causes the rock to both slide down the ice sheet but also to rotate laterally at the same time. And it's that rotation of the rock that actually gives curling this very interesting physics and that allows people to essentially throw curveballs where rather than sliding the rock directly down the sheet, you're able to bend the rock's trajectory around what are called guards, so other rocks that people put into place essentially as obstacles. There really are three key physical principles involved uh, that allow a curling rock to actually curl. Uh, and so those three are the rotation of the rock, so rotation is number one. Number two is actually frictional forces. So the fact that the uh, rock is actually rubbing and then there is there's friction between the ice surface and the bottom of the rock. Uh, and then the third one has to do with the relative velocity of the uh, rotation of the rock uh, compared to the actual stationary ice. When a curling player releases the curling rock, it slides down the ice, and it's doing two things. It's sliding linearly down the ice surface, and then it's also rotating. And the rotation leads to curl because of the physics of friction. The frictional force is always opposed motion. This is actually exactly how a car works. If you think about a car tire, friction actually pushes the car forward. So a car doesn't work without friction, and neither does a curling rock. So our, our third piece of physics is the relative velocity between the rotating rock and the stationary ice sheet. If, if you watch curling, what you often see is that a really, really heavy weight shot, meaning you throw it fast, there's a lot less friction, a lot less curl. In general, rocks that are thrown heavier have less frictional interaction with the ice surface, and then you need that friction to generate that drift, and so in general, the heavier you throw a shot, um, the straighter it's gonna go. So one of the great things about curling that makes it such a complex sport is that you're actually able to influence the trajectory of the rock after it's left the athlete's hand, and this is done by a sweeping. And this actually allows us to modify the trajectory of the rock by there's a couple of different theories. Uh, one is that by rubbing the rock, you're changing the friction, you're changing the temperature of the ice. Um, and another idea is that you actually carve these little abrasions into the ice that actually guide the rock almost in a physical way, like setting up a little wall that tends to guide the rotation of the rock and help it to curl. Another huge piece of physics is, of course, the collisions between rocks. And so when you have curling rocks colliding, there's momentum transfer, but then there's also transfer of what's called angular momentum. And the spin of one rock is communicated to the other rocks uh, after they collide. You could write 100 physics theses on that, and people have, and will continue to do so. Uh, but so that's for another episode.